let's get going. Data Bender. We are gonna start reading this manual and here it is on the first picture. We're not gonna read through the contents because we don't need to know that. But the description of the Data Bender is as follows. Data Bender is a circuit bent digital audio buffer. It is inspired by the ways in which audio equipment can fail. The sounds of skipping CDs software box and defective tape machine playback are or accessible. The 96 kHz 24-bit audio buffer can hold over a minute of stereo audio, providing a sonic canvas capable of infinite surprises and discovery. Okay, here we go. Marked diagram. And we are gonna be going through all these options one by one. Core control overview, number one, time, which is this knob right here. Time sets the sample period for incoming audio to be processed. So, this is the rate at which a new audio buffer is acquired for processing and manipulation. Switch between internal and external clock modes by, by pressing the clock button. So right now we are external clock mode. I'm gonna switch it to internal. And the uh, flashing light will give you a feedback of the actual tempo that the uh, data bender is using to process its uh, audio buffer. The buffer space located outside of the current section set by time is written in the background so that some fairly recent audio is always in the buffer when time is changed. This can bring back sounds from up to a minute ago in unexpected and interesting ways. CV responds to minus 5 to plus 5 and adds to the knob position. Okay, so basically if I take um, a CV signal and patch it into the time parameter, it adds to the current knob position. So I'm adding some positive. Actually, you know what? Let's do this on the uh, uh, planar. And I'm gonna make this a bipolar uh, CV source. Okay. So in the middle, nothing is happening. When I'm giving it positive, which is represented by uh, the green LED, it's equivalent of turning the knob clockwise. When I'm giving it negative, it's equivalent to turning the knob counterclockwise. Okay, moving on, internal clock mode. In this mode, the clock LED will blink blue at the clock rate. So that is representing the clock rate right now. And as I'm speeding it up, or slowing it down, it will give you a visual feedback of the clock rate. The time knob will be a smooth changing value from 16 seconds at the bottom, all the way to 80 Hertz at the top of the knob. So 16 second a time loop uh, when it's all the way counterclockwise. And when it's clockwise, it's basically 80 Hertz. So 180th of a second, which is, it's an audio rate. External clock mode. In this mode, the clock LED will blink white at the clock rate. Okay, so I have a patch cable coming from the uh, Mother 32's gate output, which sends a gate signal every time it's receiving a MIDI signal from Ableton via the uh, five pin MIDI pin, uh, five pin MIDI cable. So if I press the uh, clock button, it will start flashing white, and now it's gonna start reading the clock that's coming out. and I managed to pick a section which has no clock coming out. <laughs> okay, there we go. So it's a very slow clock because our project tempo, as you can see, is uh, 72 BPM. Now, here is how the uh, external clock mode works. The time knob acts as a divide multiply control with the following changes to the clock. So all the way down, it's divided by 16, which is uh, basically divided by four bars. Then divided by eight, which is two bars. Divided by four, which is one bar. Divided by two. And 
then back to uh, zero, which is it's mirroring the project tempo, which right now is 72 BPM. Uh, and if you go clockwise, multiply by two, which is eight notes, multiply by three, which is eight triplet notes, multiply by four, 16th notes, and multiply by eight, which is 32nd notes. When the knob CV move into a new division or multiplication, the clock LED will briefly illuminate gold. So if you wanna be able to tell when you switch to the next division, this thing will go gold. Yeah, you see right there.